In this video, I want to talk to you about what Birthing Better families learned as they were developing these skills in the 1970s and then more of the skills in the 1980s. And that was about practicing. When we started to develop the skills in the US in the 1970s, everyone was taking Lamaze classes. I mean, without a doubt. And Bradley classes as well. Those classes started around 32 weeks of pregnancy, maybe a little bit earlier. What we discovered is starting that late in pregnancy for those courses was fine. Because basically they had to do with just practicing over and over again certain types of breathing skills and relaxation skills. But Birthing Better Families in the 1970s found that those two systems, the skills were not broad enough, they weren't adaptable, they weren't adjustable, and often they weren't sustainable. And they certainly weren't targeted to all of us giving birth. As I mentioned before, there was a 95% vaginal birth rate in the United States in 1970. And if a woman had a cesarean, she was given a general anesthetic and wasn't awake and couldn't use skills. And that changed in the 1980s, as did the huge rise in the cesarean rate due to societal changes. So in the 1970s, the skills that birthing better families were developing were better breathing skills, better communication skills, both nonverbal, verbal, and to ourselves, as well as to the two of us working together. And also touch, because so many women were saying to men, don't touch me. <laughs> men were trying to figure out how to help. So we developed touch and we developed some of the soft skills as well. Like what do you do when you hate what's happening to you? How do you use skills when your voice inside is going, hate it, hate it, hate it. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So we developed some of the soft skills. But what we discovered was that probably learning the skills a little bit earlier than 32 weeks was a good idea. However, we didn't really clarify that until after the 1980s, when Birthing Better Fathers particularly were the ones who developed the body skills. And those were developed because the societal changes in the late 70s and 80s meant that women really weren't tolerant of the long labors that were accepted earlier on. And because they had put pressure on the medical community to change the type of cesarean because we were wearing bikinis and didn't want to be left with an ugly scar. And we wanted to be awake. We wanted our partners with us. And we wanted to try for a vaginal birth after a cesarean. If we agreed to a cesarean because we were having a long, exhausting labor that previously had just been accepted. And birth control came in, and safe abortion, and women wanting to go work in the workplace. All these changes meant that the cesarean rate tripled in the 1980s. And what we looked at as birthing better families is why. And the reason was simple, long labors. You know, if there's really a problem, the cesarean had been there in the 70s. There were some problems that weren't used for cesareans. For example, if a woman was Rh negative, the baby was Rh positive, the baby could easily die. And Rogam wasn't developed until the mid-1980s. So not all problems existed because there was a long labor. But it was common that labors were fairly long. In the 1970s, we were told that an average, that's average, that's the middle, <laughs> Divide those two, you take the shortest and you take the longest, you put them all together and divide by how many. So the average labor of a first time mother was 24 hours. It was not uncommon for women to labor for 36, 48, 72, or 96 hours. Nobody liked it. In fact, women really didn't like three or four hour labors either. They were too intense. However, what was the cause of a long labor? And it was often a failure to progress, which meant the cervix didn't dilate rapidly enough or the baby got stuck. Sometimes that had to do with the position of the baby, but not always. What we learned was it had to do with the internal tension in the woman's body. So when the birthing better skills were developed, we learned 
from trial and error that the best time to start learning the birthing better skills was around 24 weeks of pregnancy. And that had to do with the physiology of pregnancy. Your uterus was up to your navel. You could now feel your baby move, so could your partner. You knew that you were more than halfway through your pregnancy. What we learned was by 36 weeks, women's attention were really very much focused on the birth and not on learning new skills. So if we had 24 weeks to 36 weeks, we could learn the skills. And at 32 weeks, we could start doing the internal work to prepare the inside of all of the birth canal five minutes a day. Practice does not lead to perfect. We cannot practice birth beforehand. So we're learning skills with the assumption that they are going to work for us in birth. And they do because many of the skills we developed, we developed after the birth for the questions of what could I have done? And we developed other skills is what happens if, or what could I do if? And we wanted skills that worked. And what we knew is that every laboring woman had contractions. And at some point, the baby had to come out of her vagina, not her ear. And the contractions occurred in her belly, in her uterus, not in her toes. So we were all working with the universal. So we were developing skills based on the universal. And we practiced assuming that the families who developed the skills had developed skills that had been effective for them or might be effective if they could repeat the birth that they had just had, which falls under the category of you can't. There's no way to know what your birth's going to be like, and no birth is the same as the next birth. And you can't choose the birth you have because there is no way to know what it's going to be like. And most women who think that they can choose the birth they have end up saying, it was nothing like I thought it was going to be like, because there's no way to know what your birth's going to be like. So we're practicing to something that we can't do. We're hoping that the skills work. We're not trying to make them perfect. What we're trying to do is to integrate them into our bodies and minds so that we do use them. That's what's important. So for instance, when we start doing the body work at about 24 weeks, for the women, do it on the your partner first. Men and women have the same body. So if you do a hip lift on somebody and they get it, they will know what to do on you. But your body is slightly different in terms of internal tension. So if they then do it on you and you respond a little bit differently, that's okay. Just work in your body if you're pregnant. To have the hip lift, create as much space as possible side to side between your two hip blades. If you find this is easy, the person doing it on you and you having it done on you, you don't have to practice that because you have embodied it. You may write it down on a piece of paper and that be your cheat sheet. And when would you use it? If your baby feels stuck. So what you're practicing is actually you're learning the skills. And if the skills come easy to you, no, you do not need to practice them. However, as your pregnancy progresses and your body is getting ready to labor and all bodies are getting ready to labor, even if you have a planned non-laboring cesarean, and you eventually develop Braxton Hicks contractions, that tightening, that your body getting ready. Many of us as Birthing Better families then practiced our breathing, our relaxation, staying soft inside, keeping our positions open, double checking if we feel that this is a good position for our baby. We don't get into positions in labor that are good for us. We get into positions in labor that are good for our baby. And what does that mean? It means that our baby is telling us in every contraction, whether the position or posture that we are in is permitting it to open us up, then come down through and out our body. And we talk about this in another video about the progression of labor. When you go through the birthing better skills, they are presented to you in a learning management system, which is like a book, a beginning, a middle, and an end. However, the birthing better skills do not progress that way. In other words, body skills and breathing are related, but they don't come from one another. The internal work and dealing with communication, those work together, 
but they don't come from one another. So if you purchase a birthing bed or resource, don't go through it in a linear fashion. For the pregnant woman, pick the skills you want to learn because you're interested or they're going through your mind as questions. And you as the coach, pick the skills you want to learn. Each learn them separately and then teach each other. The skills in birthing better that you do need to learn together are the body skills. And that primarily is the woman doing it on her partner first and then vice versa. If you do not have anybody with you, that's rare as hen's teeth. You can always ask a friend or a relative or if you have an older child. So when we hear women say there's nobody to do this with me, that's not accurate. You're choosing not to invite someone to come and do it with you. So remember, yes, to do it. The internal work women can do by themselves. It explains how in the audio and the partners are 90% likely to do it as well. And both of you should do that regularly from 32 weeks on. That is doing a practice. You're doing it daily like practicing the piano. And you're doing it daily because if you have a vaginal birth, the short period of time of second stage, you do not want delayed, first of all. Second of all, you do not want your soft tissue in your vagina to stretch or tear because it leads to lifelong issues like prolapses or pain when you cough or laugh or jump. You don't want that. So you really want to practice the internal work five minutes a day, whether you're doing it on yourself or somebody else is doing it on you. And you want to work particularly on the areas that have tension on the inside. The breathing skills. Everything can be done while you're doing anything else in life. Driving down the road, you can work with your breathing skills. You can work with your softening skills. You can even work with the idea of being aware of whether you have tension in just sitting there and what your sit bones are doing or whether your sacrum is flexible or not. You can imagine doing these things. That's what athletes do. They visualize what they're going to do. So part of your practice is incorporating it to your mind into your body. Body. This does not take a long time. However, I have to explain to you about this issue of I'm busy. I don't have time to learn the skills. How much time does it take to take care of a baby or a five-year-old or a 12-year-old? How much time does it take for you to go from here to there to get to work? It is absolute nonsense that you do not have time to learn skills to do the activity of birthing your baby. How important is the birth of your baby? Seriously, is it important? It's an activity you're going to do with your baby, just like you're going to do the activity of parenting. You have two choices, either to become skilled or just let birth happen to you. If you want to become skilled so that you can do the activity of birthing your baby because the birth of your baby is important to you, are you willing to spend five minutes a day from 24 weeks or 20 minutes every three days? Just think about it. Because what we have found is that the reason men and women are saying, I don't have time, is that there is no societal message out there any longer that says you need to become skilled. And what we're saying to you is we need to grow a self-learning skilled birthing population for everybody. Because the birth of everybody's baby is important to them. And 100% of pregnant women are required to do the activity of birthing their baby. And every human activity is best done with skills. And our birth stories last a lifetime. You want a good one. And you have a good one, not because what they do to you or around you, but the skills that you bring to do this vital activity, this one-off activity, this life-transforming activity. So practice. In other words, learn and repeat if necessary. But once you feel it's embodied, just write it on your cheat sheet. And if you need to use the skills, they'll be there for you.